Welcome to another video on geometric optics. Today we're going to be looking at plane mirrors and how we can use a ray diagram to predict what we can see in a mirror. Before we get to that, we got some quick ideas that we need to review. One is that when you look at an image in the mirror, it's inverted, so your left side becomes the right side and vice versa. That's why we often don't like pictures of ourselves because we picture our mirror image as what we're most used to seeing. And when someone takes a photograph of us, we are actually what other people see. And so, though we're pretty close to symmetrical, most of us at least, in the case when we see ourselves in that, that photograph, what we end up feeling is that we're not quite right because we're seeing the opposite of what we're used to seeing in the mirror. That's why things like ambulances and other emergency vehicles will sometimes have their ambulance written backwards on the front of their bumper or on their hood so that we, as drivers, when looking in our rear view mirror, would be able to read that correctly. With different types of mirrors, there's different shapes. And if you have a curved or a flat mirror, it can change your perspective of what you look like in terms of your size and where you appear relative to the mirror. You can look closer or farther. So there's some really neat tricks that we can do. And ray diagrams can help predict what we're gonna look like. And so we can only memorize a few rules instead of having to memorize every potential situation. There's some basic vocabulary we're going to have to work on first. First is your object. And so your object is the real life physical material placed in front of the mirror. It's often you, but it can be any other thing that we are looking with. Often in physics, we'll have a candle or a light bulb that'll be situated there. Our image is going to be what appears in the mirror. There's another idea called the normal and the normal it's not really a physical thing, it's an imaginary uh, perpendicular line. So here we see it down on our diagram here. It's an imaginary dotted line to any surface. And once we get into some math of optics, the normal is going to make even more sense. It'll be, become more critical for your understanding. Uh, but for now, it's just simply an imaginary dotted line that we'll draw in our diagrams. It's an imaginary uh, line perpendicular to the surfaces that we're working with. And finally, we'll be working with a ray and a ray of light. Uh, there's an infinite number of them coming off us. Uh, we'll draw it as an arrow with a tip at the end. And so that's a, just a beam of light that's either emitted from something or released uh, from something that's bright, or it can be reflected from something that's bright off something that is simply your object in front of you. So the law of reflection basically states, uh, states that the angle of incidence, that's your light coming in, is equal to the angle of reflection, that's the light going out. So all of our angles are going to be measured from this imaginary dotted line called the normal. If our ray of light comes in, and say it's coming in here uh, at approximately 60 degrees from the normal, 30 from the surface, but we're going to always measure from the normal. If we measure the same number of degrees on the other side of this imaginary line called the normal, we're going to have a ray of light that's going to come out here at approximately, or actually at exactly the same angle, approximately on my diagram. So these two angles are going to be exactly the same compared to each other. And so your angle of incidence, it's going to look like this, measured from the normal. And we're going to be using a Greek letter called theta, so lowercase t, uh, to represent that. And our angle of reflection over here is going to be theta r. And so our angle of incidence is equal to our angle of reflection. Where it gets a little fancier is when we look into ray diagrams. So we're going to look at the following. We're going to look from kind of a side view. So our object right here, that's going to be our physical thing that's in front of the mirror. Um, we draw mirrors uh, with whatever their shape is, but we'll put little hatch marks behind them. In many cases, just to indicate that light can't get through. It's a common uh, way of diagrammatically showing that, th that this isn't a lens or a window. Uh, we talk about a primary or principal axis, and so it's an imaginary line that runs um, perpendicular to our mirror, and then an image is going to be something that we're going to see. When we're looking at the rays of light that are coming off an object, you don't draw these initially, but there's rays of light coming in all different directions. And how do we know that? Well, when your teacher's at the front of the class, everyone can see the teacher, and so that means that there's rays of light coming off or reflecting off the object or the teacher and going into a whole bunch of different eyes. Similarly, um, with all the different people in the classroom, 
the teacher at the front can see every single one of them. So there's an infinite number of rays of light that reflect off us and go in all different directions. We are going to focus on just a couple of those rays. The first ray we're going to uh, focus on, and this is going to be how we start every single ray diagram, both for mirrors and for lenses, is going to be a ray of light that comes off the top of the object, okay, so maybe the tip of a candle flame, top of your head, and it's going to come in parallel to that primary axis or principal axis. And we learned that the rule is that any ray of light that comes in and hits the mirror is going to reflect at the same angle compared to the normal. And at this location, the normal to the mirror right here is actually right back along that same surface. And so if that ray of light comes in and hits the mirror right here, it's going to reflect. It's going to come back out right at the exactly the same line and bounce back out. If we take another ray of light, uh, for argument's sake, I'm going to make it red this time. Uh, just so that we can refer to them by their colors. It has no reflection on the color of the actual object. So our ray of light has come in here and it's come in at an angle this time. And so our primary axis is one of the many normals uh, to our mirror. So it's just simply an imaginary line coming off perpendicular to the surface. And so this ray of light has come in. So we need to get the reflected angle that's gonna come off our mirror to be exactly the same as the one that it came in at. And we can either use a protractor and physically measure this angle, measure that out down here, and then draw a line. It's a really neat trick that we could use as well. If we measure uh, the height of our object right here, so we just took a ruler and measured that height at that point, and we took that height and we measured it directly down underneath our object, then we know that this length and this length are the same. Now, we're not actually going to draw this in. I'm going to erase that in a second. But it's just a really neat geometric trick to make sure that our angles are exactly the same. Because if I do that, now I'm going to erase that little line that I put here. I know that this distance and this distance are the same. And since I know this distance from the object to the mirror is going to be the same for both sides, it means that these two angles have to be the same. And that's just a neat trick for drawing. You've got multiple rays of light that are coming off your mirror, and they ultimately go into your eyes. How we have depth perception, and you have to get this figured out by the time you're about two years old, because if your eyes don't get aligned before that time, you actually don't feel depth perception. Kind of a, a cool psychology thing. Uh, these rays of light are coming out, and where light appears to radiate from, that's where we think an object actually is. Mirrors are, are a neat trick because they're going to take these two rays of light that are spreading out and they're going to reflect off. And so we're going to see something as if it's right back here behind the mirror, even though it's not really. Although humans are used to mirrors and we're pretty fancy creatures. If you take a fish that's not uh, quite so fancy, and if it's an aggressive territorial fish and you put a mirror in the tank, it'll actually attack the mirror. In some cases, it'll attack the mirror until it's dead, trying to keep that other fish out can really trick our brains into seeing something that's back there. How do we actually see what's there? One of the tricks that we can do is that if we take this ray of light and we extend it backwards, our brain says that if you got two rays of light that are spreading out, well, wherever they appear to be coming from, that's where the image must be. Here we go. I'm going to extend these rays of light back and get that as close to straight as possible. Although these rays of light don't come from behind the mirror, our brain is used to seeing rays of light that spread out. And so it assumes, at least from an image perspective, that that's where it is. So if we're going to draw an image here, uh, let's see, we'll make it a nice, soothing hot pink. It's going to assume that there is something on the other side of the mirror right here. Notice that these distances from the object to the mirror and from the mirror to the image, that these are exactly the same. So when you look at yourself in the mirror in the morning, assuming it's a regular plain mirror, you're gonna look like you're exactly the same distance on the other side of the mirror. Your image forms, and so if we're gonna do some highlighting here, so this is your image right here. You don't need to highlight this in real life and your mirror. So your mirror is the structure right here. Your object was the thing placed in front of the mirror. And your primary axis, 
So your primary axis, this is imaginary surface. Sorry. Your primary axis is this imaginary line coming off of your mirror. It just gives us a reference point for when we're drawing things. So your image is going to form where these extended rays are going to cross. It's going to end up same size, right side up. And during this unit, we're going to call it a virtual image because it's going to appear to be on the other side of the mirror. And we're not going to be able to project it onto a screen. Later on, we'll be able to use certain types of mirrors called a concave mirror, actually able to project an image onto a screen which will be used in some other cool technologies we may get to look at later. And so that's how to use a ray diagram for mirrors. If we're going to look at this a little fancier, periscopes. That'll be a lesson for later. In a submarine, when we are underwater, there's very cramped spaces. An extension uh, for you for homework is when we use a periscope, this is how they're traditionally structured, whether in the trenches in World War I or whether in World War II with uh, U-boats or submarines, we would always have this configuration of mirrors at 45 degrees and 45 degrees to see things that were above the water or above the trenches. When they look around, the whole periscope has to turn. Well, that required a lot of extra space in the submarine, in a place that was already pretty crowded. So why didn't we just twist the top of the uh, periscope? Wouldn't that have made it a whole lot simpler? Consider the rays of light as they're coming in from the top and the bottom uh, for homework and explain why we don't do that and why we actually have to turn the whole periscope around. So as a reflection and an introduction to ray diagrams, you're gonna look the same size and right side up, and it'll be a virtual image, which means it'll be not projectable and hiding behind the mirror. Thank you for watching.